Hey, welcome back. My name is Drew, and in this video, we are going to be exploring sliders in GeoGebra. So I've been finding over the last few months that I've been going to GeoGebra more and more often just to kind of like play out different mathematical things in my head to build visualizations for classes I'm teaching and just to see how things work and even to do like kind of some mathematical art. And really to me, like the main thing that makes GeoGebra so useful is sliders. Sliders are essentially uh, variables in GeoGebra that you can change on the spot and whatever kind of picture you've built in GeoGebra will change along with the changing variable. You'll see what I mean, but it really gives you the, the opportunity to see the effects of different mathematical constants on equations. It gives you the opportunity to animate things over time, which is useful, you know, if you're making videos like me or if you just want to see how things evolve. So in this video, I've got just a couple examples to show you that use sliders. And uh, hopefully by the end, I'll be able to show you some neat little tricks that you can do with them. Here we go. So here I am in GeoGebra.org, just the main page and I'm going to open up an empty calculator. This is the 2D calculator, but pretty much everything I'm gonna say going forward will work just fine in the 3D calculator as well. And to make a slider, um, you need to pick a name for your variable. I'm gonna use capital R, you'll see why in a second. And you would just type in, in the input bar over here on the left, you type in something like R equals three. And you hit enter and it will give you a slider. So this is a slider here. By moving this black dot here, you can change the value of R to anything between negative five and five. Now, if you wanna change the value of R to be something either less than negative five or bigger than five, you can click one of these numbers and it'll give you a text box that you can change. Our variable R is going to be the radius of a circle. So I'm gonna say R is not uh, less than zero. And for the upper bound, let's say, how about 10? This step here is like the increment size. So um, if you saw before the value of R was changing by 0.1 uh, every time I moved it, you could make that bigger or smaller if you want. And if you leave it blank, it'll default to probably just like something like 0.1. So I'll just hit enter and it'll bring us back to where we were before, now with updated upper and lower bounds. And now that we have our slider for our variable, we can just use that variable in any of our GeoGebra constructions. So I said I was gonna make a circle. Let's make a circle centered at the origin. So that'll be x squared plus y squared equals r, whoops, r squared. There we go. And if you either click outside of the input box or hit enter, it gives us this circle. Notice that it, I, I, when I wrote this, I wrote R squared, but as soon as we hit enter, it'll replace R with whatever the current ver value of R is. Of course, now in the, the viewer, we can see a circle here. I'm just gonna click this once and hide the label. There we go. Okay, so there's our circle. Now, if we go over here and pick up our slider handle, we can move it and maybe like what you would expect, the, the radius of the circle gets bigger and smaller. So that's sort of the basics of using a slider. I wanna show you a couple more things about how we can create them. So I'll delete both of these. And I'm gonna recreate exactly what we just had, except I'm not gonna make the slider first. So GeoGebra is kind of smart. And if you type in an equation that has something in it that GeoGebra does not recognize. So it'll recognize lowercase x and lowercase y as those you know coordinates in the xy plane but if it doesn't know what r is if i go and hit enter it's just going to say oh r is something that you probably want to be able to change so it will make us a slider for r um, with the default upper and lower bounds so that trick for creating a slider variable just by entering an expression that has the variable in it will work independent of how many variables are in the expression. Let's say that we want to create a circle whose radius was a variable and also whose x and y coordinates over the center, that's not the right way to say that, but whose center was also variable. So the uh, general equation for a circle looks like how about x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. So this will be a circle with radius r and uh, center at the point a comma b. And just like before, if I go ahead and hit enter, it'll automatically make sliders for A, B, and R. And we can you know, move them around in the same way as before. We can change the radius, the Y coordinate, and it'll move the circle up and down. 
and the X coordinate will move the circle left and right. And now if you're working in the 2D graphing calculator, and this sort of works in the 3D graphing calculator, but not as well, you can use slider variables to make points on the screen that you can move with your mouse. So if I go to the input bar and I type in the point A, B, uh, this should be the center of the circle and it's already actually made a point there. If I hit enter, um, it makes a new point. It calls it C. Because A and B are slider variables, this point is actually a special point in that I can move it. If I just click and drag, I can move the point and it will update the values of A and B as I do. I mean, so this is really useful if you want to create like an interactive um, graphic and you want to hide all of this stuff. If you want to hide this entire panel and just create something where you can move around like geometric objects, then you can create these points that you can move and change, you know, hidden variables that the user can't see. That's a really neat trick, but there are some limitations on the types of points that you can move. If one of the coordinates of your point is literally a slider variable. So our slider variables here are A, B, and R. If one of the coordinates of this point are one of those three, then we'll be able to move that point. So let me hide both of these things and kind of show you what I mean by that. We could create a point that uh, had an X coordinate that we could change, but a Y coordinate that was fixed at three. So it'll we'll be able to move this horizontally, but I can't move it vertically because the Y coordinate is fixed at three. You can't do something though, like say, uh, I want this point to be the point, you know, 2A, comma three. I mean, you can do that and it'll draw the point, but I'm clicking here and dragging and it won't move. So the limitation really is that either the X coordinate or the Y coordinate of your point has to be verbatim one of your variables. Okay, let's work through another example. In this example, I'm gonna show you how I use sliders to do animations and how you can use them to create animated graphics. Uh, I'm gonna start with a function. I'm gonna call it f of x. And how about, we're gonna go with three sine x. And what we're gonna make as far as animation here is uh, we're gonna make an animation that shows this graph sort of like appearing from left to right. The way we'll do that is by creating a slider that keeps track of the horizontal position. Let's call the variable for that lowercase a. Um, I didn't say this before, but if you just type in a letter that you want to be a slider variable and then hit enter, it'll make a slider for you. That's really cool. So a is gonna be uh, kind of the horizontal position along our page. So let's say a goes from negative seven to seven. And just like we did at the end of the previous example, let's make a point that moves along this sine curve. So I'll make the point a comma f of a, which uh, no matter what the value of a is, this will always be a point along the curve. And if I change a, the point slides along the sine curve. And actually, going back to what we were talking about just a second ago with these movable points, this is a point whose x coordinate is a slider variable. So actually, I can take this and drag it, and it'll move along the sine curve. We don't really need to do that for this animation that we're going to make, but it's still kind of cool. The goal is when we press the play button for this point to kind of go up and down, moving from left to right, and for the graph to be drawn underneath it, kind of like, like as if it were the tip of a pen. So to do that, I'm going to hide our function f and we're going to make a new function. And this new function will be, it'll have the same output values of f, but only for input values that are less than a. So let's call that function g and uh, we can use the if command. What we're going to do is we're going to say if x is less than or equal to a. So I typed the less than symbol and then the equals to symbol and it made this less than or equal to symbol. Um, if x is less than or equal to a, I want the value of g of x to be the same as the value of f. We do that, we hit enter, we, then you can see it's drawn what we wanted to draw. It's drawn all of this function uh, to the left of the point and none of it to the right. So to make our animation, let's rewind a all the way back to negative seven. And you might've noticed this play button next to all of the sliders we've been making. If you press play, then GeoGebra will animate the variable in this slider increasing in, in like a smooth way. And so uh, that's exactly what we want to do here. So we'll, we'll press play. 
and our point uh, moves from left to right. And as it does, we're seeing the graph of this function g drawn here. Now, something's going to happen right here, which we don't really like because uh, it kind of plays this backwards. And, and that's sort of the default behavior. If you have a slider and it hits its uh, maximum value, um, while it's animating, it'll start decreasing back down to its minimum value. And then once it hits the minimum value, it'll bounce back. But if we really wanted to change that, we could go into the settings for this slider. The way we do that is by clicking the three dots here, going to settings, and then finding the slider tab up here. And here's, you can, you can change a bunch of different pieces of the slider, including the minimum and maximum like we did before. We can also change how it's animated. So let's say uh, I want this to animate twice as fast as it did before. And the repeat setting is really what we're looking for here. Um, it defaults to oscillating, so that's why it kind of goes back and forth. But um, if I'm just making an animation, say for like a video, I really just want this to play once, you know, to show the sign function appearing on screen. So I'm gonna pick increasing once. If you picked increasing without the once, it would increase, and then when it hit the maximum value, it would jump back down to the minimum and increase again. For us, let's pick increasing once. Click the X here to close our settings. Rewind A all the way back down and play again. And there's our animation, and when A hits its maximum value, it stops, and there we go. So I'm not kidding when I say I use this all of the time. In fact, I don't remember the last time I made a video for some kind of math thing where I didn't use a GeoGebra animation somewhere along the line. If you go back and look at my last few videos to do with like linear algebra and you know sketching hyperbolic paraboloids, you'll see there's some animated mathematical renderings in there and all of that was done in GeoGebra using sliders and animating them. You can definitely go way more complicated than what we have here. And I would say you're only just limited by your imagination when it comes to making these things. There's definitely a lot to do. So that's where I'm gonna leave this one for now. Um, there's definitely a lot more that I feel like I want to show you in the way of things to do with GeoGebra, things to like build up your foundational skills in GeoGebra. And then once you have a strong set of foundational skills, there are loads of really cool animations and visualizations that you can do. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I've been using GeoGebra a lot more recently just to, you know, explore my own mathematical curiosity and to like build instructional visualizations. There's so much to do in it. It's a great tool. So uh, I think I'll be showing you a lot more in the next few videos about things that we can do in GeoGebra. So I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you have anything that you're trying to figure out how to do in GeoGebra or if there's a particular piece of GeoGebra's functionality that you're trying to figure out. Go ahead and give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more fun math content. Thanks for playing along and I'll see you in the next video.